Good evening. Dear esteemed guests, deans, faculty, honorable delegates, and the executive team of the Georgetown University in Qatar United Nation Conference. With great honor and humility, I welcome you all to the 15th 2020 GMAN Conference. My name is Kushbu Shah, and I am Deputy Secretary General. Today, we are ecstatic. Modern United Nations has always been an integral part of Georgetown. It is important for us to educate young minds on how to use diplomacy as a tool for peace negotiations. This MUN conference, an important element of our tradition, symbolizes how we uphold the practice of diplomacy and peace brokering outside the classroom walls and through practical experiential learning to have you to be a part of this monumentous tradition in our 15th year is extraordinary. Before we move on, we would like to remember Katrina Kirohiko, a graduate of the inaugural class who passed away on February 11, 2020. Katrina was part of the organizing committee for the first MUN at Georgetown University, Qatar in 2006 and she played an indispensable part in defining the ethos, character, and culture of the student body at Georgetown University in Qatar. Delegates, the world is constantly evolving. The competitive marketplace is demanding and challenging. The G1 is a platform for you all to practice your strategic thinking and problem-solving skills. And while we do this, it is also important to recognize and realize our privilege, our power, and the voice we hold. This preeminence theme is the not South divide, authority, inequality, and interventionism. In sync with the theme, we see the addition of two exciting new counties, the International Code of Justice, and the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women. No conference is complete without the hard work and input of its dedicated chairpersons, staff, press team, the employment of student workers, and the entire student faculty who have all worked extremely hard to make this conference happen. With the deepest gratitude, I thank you all for all your support and contribution. Most importantly, I thank Dean Dalal, Dean Hill, Naila Chairman, and Jimin Koshi for being our mentors and guides and for always supporting us in this process. So delegates, now it is your moment to shine. Stand your chairs. Help me challenge your fellow delegates to think, argue, and question. We have done our job. And now it's time for you to do yours. Please join me in watching a short video on Georgetown University in Qatar. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce the next speaker. Dr. Ahmed Dalal is the Dean of Georgetown University in Qatar. Dr. Dalal earned his PhD from Columbia University in Islamic Studies and his BE in Mechanical Engineering from the American University of Beirut. Dr. Dalal has written and lectured widely on a variety of topics, including the Islamic disciplines of learning in medieval and early modern Islamic societies, the development of traditional and exact Islamic sciences, Islamic medieval thought, the early modern evolution of Islamic revivalism and intellectual movements, Islamic law, and the causes and consequences of the 11 September 2001 attacks. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Dean Dalal. Thank you, Khashbu, for your kind words. Our esteemed guests, CEO for the World Innovation Summit on Education, Dr. Stavros Yanuka, students from around the world, distinguished guests, members of the Georgetown University community. 
On behalf of the faculty, staff, students at Georgetown University in Qatar, I am delighted to welcome you to the 15th annual Georgetown Model United Nations. For 15 years, our students at Georgetown University in Qatar have worked tirelessly to forge a legacy for themselves, passing their knowledge from year to year, making improvements, and ensuring that this experience is educational and fun, engaging and challenging. There is a double entendre in the title of this event, which on the one hand speaks of the fact that you represent model students in every way. You are engaged, attentive, motivated, and curious. But also you come to the table in a spirit of sharing and camaraderie that can and should be a model for the United Nations itself. The world could really use your prodigious talents and generous hearts right now. We are genuinely honored to host you here and are moved by your passion, energy, and commitment to making a better world. Last year, model UN students discussed how to negotiate diversity and integration with conflicting and sometimes violent interests. This year, you are talking about who is at the negotiating table, whose interests are the most powerful, and how to overcome inequalities. As an educator, but primarily as a citizen of the world, I venture to say that there is no problem more salient in the world today than the problem of inequality. The world is changing rapidly, perhaps even exponentially. But as much as the world is changing, what has not changed is that you are participants in a great and noble cause to build a better world. This year, the Georgetown University in Qatar joins the Edmund Walsh School of Foreign Service in Washington, D.C. in celebrating the establishment of the School of Foreign Service 100 years ago. The needs and problems that Edmund Walsh stated in 1919 when establishing the school in the wake of World War I are even more critical today. We are in desperate need of peacemakers who speak multiple languages, have a firm grasp of, of history, and understand the, vi the finer principles of law, political science, and commerce. These are the very skills you have pra participated, you have practiced to get to this room, and skills you will continue to refine through this experience and beyond. The hard work and time you spend on honing these skills is time well spent. These skills are so very important. We hope during your time here, you learn not just about the process of global decision-making, but also about negotiating from both the position of weakness and the position of strength, ultimately learning where compromise can lead to shared insight. We hope most importantly that you discover the power of simply listening. What voices do I hear and what voices are missing here? In many ways, you represent the youth of the world leading by example with your will and aptitude to weigh in on some of today's most pressing issues. I encourage you to look around you and think, how can I take this wealth of resources and opportunities and use them to help others? What can I learn today that can help change the world for the good? Before concluding my remarks, a few words of thanks. Please join me in thanking the Model UN board for organizing this wonderful event. FISA, Hushbu, Nob, Elan, Zoya, and Eamon. I hope I didn't miss anyone. And support staff, of course, here at Georgetown University of Qatar who've been making this possible, especially Naila Sherman, who has been doing this for 13 years, and Afsha Khouli, who has, who, have, who has been doing it for 11 years. And also Omar Suwadi, who has processed the thousands of visas for 100% of international students over the years. Please give them and everyone else who made this possible a round of applause. This is the first time that we have been able to host the Model UN event in our building. And I'd like to invite you to take advantage of your environment. We are the seat of international affairs education in Qatar, a small state with an impressive global political footprint 
and international presence. I now turn the lectern back over to this year's capable model UN board members who will proceed with the program, starting with the reading of this year's participating schools, followed by the UN Honor Pledge. This year's UN Secretary General, Fisa Shahzad, will then give her student address and introduce tonight's keynote speaker, Stavros Yanuka, a good friend and colleague, the CEO of the World Innovation Summit for Education. I'm not allowed to introduce you, they will introduce you, um, whom we're honored to have tonight. We will end with the ceremonial recognition of the committee chairs before sitting down to dinner. So here is our UN Chief of Communications, Nob Nguyen, for the reading of this year's participating school. Hello, my name is Nguyen Hoang Minh Ngoc. This is Sean Wang, and I will now recognize the school participating in the 15th annual Georgetown MUN conference. When your school's name is called, we ask that you stand up and remain standing. Hold all your applauses until all schools have been called. Qatar, Academic Bridge Program, Al Bayan Preparatory School for Girls, Al Jazeera Academy, Al Hor Secondary School for Girls. Please remain standing after you've been called and hold all your applauses at the end. Al Manar International School. American Academy School, Amna Bint Wahab Secondary School for Girls, Al Fast Global School, Belgravia High School, Blythe Academy Qatar, Cambridge International School, Compass International School, Ibeki High School for Health Professions Qatar, Doha Academy School, English Modern School Ahur, Global Academy, International School of Doha, International School of London, Qatar, MES Indian School, Middle East International School, Newton British Academy, Newton International Academy, Hurling Season International School, Philippine International School, Qatar, Philippine School, Doha, SDK, Qatar, the Cambridge School, the International School of Shoifat, the Lebanese School, Voltaire School, Voltaire French School. Ethiopia, International Community School Addis Ababa, the Greek Community School of Addis Ababa, Ghana, SOS Herman Gamir International College, Association International School, Indonesia, Global Jaya School, Morocco, Test, Nepal, Olin's School, Nigeria, American International School of Abuja, South Africa, African Leadership Academy, Turkey, FMV Ozela Yazaga Isik and Felicity. Ladies and gentlemen, the participants of the 2020 Model United Nations Conference. Please remain standing for the recitation of the MUN Honor Pledge, led by Ayman Khan. Thank you, Nobin Khan. Delegates, please turn to the Georgetown University Model United Nations Honor Pledge on page six of your program. Repeat after me. During this conference, I will do my best to find out as much as I can about the country or organization I am representing. I will converse with my peers from countries around the world in a civilized and respectful manner. Despite multi-party and often heated debates, I will try to remain calm and respect uh, composed. I will respect the fact that people hailing from different cultures, having different conceptions of the norms of social interactions, I will not only adopt to that, 
but take it as an opportunity to enhance my intercultural understanding. Thank you. Please be seated. Now, it is my pleasure to welcome to the stage a member of Georgetown's class of 2021 and this year MUN's Secretary General, Fizda Shahzad. Honorable guests and delegates, it is my distinct honor to be serving as the Secretary General for the 15th Annual Georgetown Model United Nations Conference. This is a milestone year for us, as Georgetown Model United Nations is not only our 15th conference, but also the first international conference to be hosted on the GUQ campus. The conference theme for this year is the North-South Divide, Authority, Inequality, and Interventionism. And each topic that will be discussed over the course of these four days will be reflective of this. With technicalities finally out of the way, let's come to the real personal aspect of what this MUN is actually about. After having been a part of MUNs for the last eight or so years, I have come to the realization that we often prioritize the wrong things. MUN conferences can often be too competitive. Debate here does not mean arguing for the sake of being heard, but for the sake of understanding a variety of different perspectives. You must embody the foreign policy views of a country that you may not necessarily resonate with in order to not only accurately represent them, but also personally comprehend why such policies exist. For some of you, there may be a completely different challenge. You may feel underconfident or scared or intimidated at the prospect of having to speak in front of a group of people that you do not know. Please know that you are not alone. All of us at some point feel this way. We encourage you to simply try. Know that nobody will remember in four days from now that you stuttered in your speech or that you lost your train of thought midway. You are here to learn and grow. You may, or, you may or may not succeed in winning an award, but you will most definitely have gained something, whether it be knowledge, skill, or new friends. Lastly, please do enjoy yourselves. And when conferences can be quite overwhelming in the beginning because of the sheer amount of information that is provided to you in the form of rules of procedure, background guidance, and the expectations that your chairs have. Please remember that this is still meant to be an enjoyable experience. We would encourage you to enhance your world group and will learn from others. Please do, not, please do approach your chairs, student board, and other members of the Georgetown community if you have any questions, concerns, or if you would just like to have a personal conversation. We hope all of you have a memorable conference. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct honor to introduce to you the keynote speaker for this year's Georgetown UN 2020 conference. Stavros Yanuka is the CEO of the World Innovation Summit for Education, a global think tank of the Qatar Foundation. WISE is dedicated to enabling the future of education through innovation. Its activities encompass research, capacity building programs, and advocacy. WISE flagship initiatives include an annual series of research publications, a biennial global summit dubbed the Davos of Education, the WISE EdTech Accelerator, the WISE Innovation Awards, and the WISE Words Podcast. For more information, visit wwwwise qatarorg Prior to joining WISE in 2012, Stavros was the executive vice dean of the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy at the National University of Singapore. He joined the LKY School in 2005 to spearhead the implementation of an ambitious growth strategy, which he had helped develop as a management consultant with McKinsey and Company. Stavros is the co-author of Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, Building a Global Policy School in Asia, published by World Scientific in 2012. Before joining the LKY School, Stavros spent five years with McKinsey and Company, serving private and public sector clients in Singapore. Indonesia, South Korea, and Canada, predominantly in finance, healthcare, and education. Prior to joining McKinsey, Stavros practiced corporate law in the city of London from, with the firms Goldens and Mayor Brown and Flat. Stavros holds an MBA with distinction from London Business School and an LLP with honors from the University of Bristol. He is a member of the Law Society of England and Wales, a fellow of the Royal Society for the Encouragement of Arts, Manufacturers, and Commerce and a member of the Board of Trustees of Nazarbayev University. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome me. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Stavros Yanuka to the stage. Uh, Dean Dalal, Madam Secretary General, MUN Board, distinguished faculty, students, and delegates. Uh, thank you for the warm welcome and for inviting me to address uh, this model of the United Nations. 
Um, when I received the invitation, I accepted almost immediately because MUN was very much a part of my educational experience. Uh, I attended my first MUN in Boston in uh, 1993, so a few years before uh, you were born, I think, sometime in the last century. Um, and I was then part of a group that organized an international conference at my university, the University of Bristol, where I had the uh, privilege of presiding over the ICJ simulation. Um, I found the experience incredibly enriching, and I do congratulate all of you uh, for taking this uh, step, organizers and participants alike, for choosing to make MUN a part of your education. Now, beyond MUN, um, the UN in general has been an ever-present backdrop uh, to my life. Uh, as a Greek Cypriot growing up in Nicosia, the ubiquitous presence of the blue helmets was very much part of my uh, formative experiences. Uh, as were news of successive rounds of ultimately unsuccessful uh, UN-sponsored negotiations that have bedeviled uh, Secretaries General from Utant in the 1960s uh, to the current uh, incumbent, Antonio Guterres. Um, and in my professional career, particularly at the Lee Kuan Yew School for Public Policy and now at WISE, I often have the opportunity to interact uh, with the UN system, its officials, and its diplomats. Uh, indeed, WISE regularly participates at the UN General Assembly Week, uh, which takes place every uh, year in September in New York. So with that backdrop in mind, I just want to spend a little bit of time um, addressing three of the most common critiques um, that I have come across about the UN. Uh, and in the process, uh, hopefully explain to you why I believe that today the UN and what it represents is more important than ever. So critique number one is that the UN is just a talking shop. Now there's some truth to this critique, um, as I am sure some of you who might be new to the MUN uh, process will discover as you engage in seemingly pedantic debates over the minutiae of resolutions and declarations. I know that was the first impression I got when I took part in the MUN. I, I represent Lebanon uh, in the General Assembly and, and I found the, uh, uh, the experience a little bit excruciating if I'm being completely honest. However, I urge you not to be discouraged. Yes, the UN is a talking shop, but talking shops, especially international talking shops, are incredibly important. They're important because talking in the form of debate and negotiation is only one of two ways that we have through which we can seek to persuade each other, resolve differences, and reach mutually beneficial agreements. The alternative is coercion essentially using force or the threat of force to impose the will of the strong on the weak. So being in a talking shop might be time consuming and it might be frustrating, but the alternative is far, far worse. Moreover, as was noted both by Dean Dalal and by, by FISA, the Secretary General, an invaluable element of the MUN experience is the need to understand the interests and perspectives of the country that you represent, which is often not the country that you come from or a country that you have any affiliation with. Now, this is a critical skill for any career and not just for international diplomacy, because it's only through understanding each other's perspectives that we can begin to find common ground. Critique number two. The UN doesn't achieve anything beyond well-intentioned, but ultimately ineffective resolutions and declarations. Again, there's an element of truth to this. UN resolutions, even Security Council resolutions, are often honored more in the breach than in the observance. And we still have a long way to go before the UN's declarations on human, social, and economic rights become a lived reality for everyone. But to claim that the UN has not achieved anything is to ignore the fact that the past 75 years have seen unprecedented levels 
of peace and prosperity in the world that owe much to the rules-based international order at the heart of which sits the UN. Moreover, beyond the Security Council and the General Assembly, what many people don't realize is that the UN is a vast and complex system of agencies, programs, conventions, and other mechanisms that facilitate international collaboration on an unprecedented scale. A range of activities that we often take for granted. Everything from international air travel, cross-border trade, and combating infectious diseases like the COVID-19 currently um, underway in China. The UN has a role to play in all of these arenas. Critique number three. The UN is anachronistic. It reflects the world of 1945 and not the world of 2020. Now again, there is some truth to this, particularly if you look at the composition of the permanent members of the Security Council. And to a certain extent, this critique is implied in your theme, the North-South divide, authority, inequality, interventionism. Again, it's true that the global South, the Indian subcontinent, the Middle East, Africa, and Latin America are underrepresented in the power structures of the UN. This is a problem. But I want to argue, perhaps a little bit provocatively, that this is not the most acute problem that the UN faces today. In fact, I think the biggest challenge facing the UN today is not the dominance of the West, together with, with China and Russia, but it's disengagement, particularly disengagement on the part of the leading power of the day, the United States. And it's a problem because at the end of the day, the UN is a geopolitical enterprise whose viability depends on the engagements of the great powers of the day and their willingness to accept certain constraints on their freedom to act in the international arena. Now, without the engagement of the great powers, the danger um, is that the UN will become not anachronistic, but irrelevant. And I think this is what's confronting us today with respect to the most pressing challenge, yes, which is climate emergency. Without action on the part of the United States and China, as well as the other major powers, but especially the United States and China, there is absolutely no prospect of addressing emergency. Now, the world today possesses the technology to move to zero carbon emissions by 2050 without sacrificing economic growth. I encourage everyone actually to, to look at a, an article that Martin Wolf uh, wrote in the Financial Times yesterday, um, presenting very compelling uh, evidence of this. What's lacking is political will and leadership in the international arena, primarily from the preeminent powers of the day who see any um, treaty or uh, constraints imposed by uh, international law as, as an infringement of their sovereignty. Now, the next 30 years will be critical for the future of our world. <laughs> Nearly all of the challenges that we face require a concerted global response. We have the mechanisms, we have the technology, and we have the knowledge to address all of them. What we need are talented and courageous people to step forward and take the lead in big and small ways. This is where you guys come in. Because the next 30 years are also the years when all of you in this room will reach the prime of your lives. And I hope as a result of your MUN experience, many of you will work to choose in the international arena. Diplomacy, of course, is one avenue, and this, this is a great place. Uh, to acquire the necessary skills, knowledge, and mindsets to pursue this kind of career. But so too is working in global non-governmental organizations like WISE, or academic institutions, in fact, like Georgetown, even multinational corporations. The skills that you pick up, diplomacy, negotiation, public speaking, debating, these are critical. 
and you can apply them in almost any arena. So once again, I congratulate you for taking the step to make NUN part of your education. I hope that you're going to learn and enjoy your experience as much as I did uh, all those years ago. Good luck, and thank you for listening to me and for inviting me. My name is Doya Fay, and I would now like to ask all committee chairs to stand up upon hearing their name. UN Security Council, Chair Bhutena Althani, <coughs> Co-Chair, Please hold your applause till the end of the announcement. UN Human Rights Council, Chair Aiza Khan, Co-Chair Temur Khujamatov, Rapporteur Lina Ahmed. International Court of Justice, Chair Wesley Chen, Co-Chair Zakaria Abu. Economic and Social Council, Chair Maryam Hassan, Co-Chair Mohammed Saad Pula, Rapporteur Rahima Velmi. Disarmament and International Security, Chair Khansa Maria, Co-Chair Bakar Basit Bhatt, Rapporteur Noor Albanna. UN Commission on the Status of Women, Chair Mona Saf, Co-Chair Sephora Osmani. UN Environment Program, Chair Eamon Khan, Co-Chair Fuad Ansaruddin, Rapporteur Fariha Iqbal. Crisis Committee, Chair Taha Kaleem Bukhari, Co-Chair Karthike Onyal. Thank you. <laughs> Delegates, please remain seated after the closing gavel. You will be escorted to your committee room by a staff member. With the powers vested in me by the student board, it is my distinct pleasure to officially declare the 2020 Georgetown Qatar Model United Nations open.